new name. The feds this week announced a rebrand of their highly controversial carbon pricing program. The rebate portion of that program will now be called exactly that, the Canada Carbon Rebate. It used to be called the Climate Action Incentive. Now, there aren't any changes to how the federal fuel pricing system and corresponding rebate actually work, but the Liberals argue the new name will make the program easier for people to understand. The payments go out to households in the eight provinces where the federal carbon tax applies every three months, but according to an Angus Reid poll released in November, one quarter of eligible Canadians say they don't believe they receive the rebate, and a majority of people polled want the whole price on carbon dropped or paused as the cost of living continues to increase. Steve McKinnon is the government's house leader. Hi, Minister. Pleasure to have you back here in studio. It's great to be with you. I appreciate you making the time. Uh, Minister, how are you going to judge and how will your government judge the success of this rebrand? Well, first of all, we want to make sure that people are aware of the substantial sum of money they, they're getting in their bank account on the 16th of the month every three months, up to $1,800 for a family of four. So that's very important. They also need to know that eight out of 10 families are going to be better off uh, under this plan uh, than uh, in terms of the uh, money they would spend on uh, fuel or, or, or other things. We want to also make sure that they know that this is going to a fight against climate change. This is a core integral part of the government's plan to reduce GHGs, something every country on earth has pledged to do through the Paris Agreement. So I have a lot of to part of parse part of what you just said, but do you essentially believe that changing the name of the rebate is going to accomplish all that you just said? Well, let's, let's agree on one thing. No one remembers what the last name was. Or, I think. The, or the couple before that as well, right? This <laughs> yeah. is a, this the Canada is not Carbon the first time Rebate you've it. is simple and it's designed so that Canadians understand that A, they're getting more money in their pockets for the most part, and B, they're part of this fight against uh, greenhouse gases and global warming. And is it your government's hope, though, that it changes attitudes about the policy as a whole? Because if you look at public opinion polling, the public sentiment is not on your side. Only 15%, for example, of those Canadians polled by Angus Reid in November said the tax should continue as planned with the scheduled increase that's coming April 1st. The majority of Canadians want the price on carbon dropped or momentarily for three years waived. A majority yes. of Canadians say that right now. Is it your expectation that you can change that? Well, it, it's hard in a country as big and a, as diverse as Canada with different pricing regimes. You know, BC was the first to put it in place. They have their own system. Quebec has its own system. There's a federal backstop in other provinces. But uh, this is a big change. Climate change is a big change though, Vashi. And what we're happy to do is come on, explain those things. But you know who won't come on this show or any other show and explain his plan? is Pierre Polyev. You know, he hasn't been asked the question, what about those families who are gonna lose money every month? What about those families who are no longer will participate in the fight uh, okay. against climate change? Okay. He doesn't I mean, answer those questions. I mean, he, his de I have interviewed his delegates multiple times on their, on their climate plans. So, uh, he himself has not done an interview, but they have, and I've asked all of those questions. My questions are directed to you and the government. When you say that this will help Canadians appreciate the role they're playing by paying this price on carbon in order to combat the effects of climate change, isn't it not incumbent on your government to actually tell them to, but to what degree this specific policy will reduce emissions. You have not done it. The Auditor General's office pointed that out three months ago. It's actually 95% of your climate plan does not have targets attached to it. Why have you not spelled out the degree to which a carbon tax will reduce emissions? Well, no one doubts. All the experts agree that carbon pricing is a major uh, uh, component of our plan. Uh, our, our targets to uh, reduce climate change and, and by how much? to reduce greenhouse gases and greenhouse gases are coming down. There was a report issued in December by the Environment Department that shows that we're making great progress uh, in the fight against uh, against greenhouse gases. With all due gases. respect, that same Auditor General's report at the end of November, or at the beginning of November rather, said that you were not on track to meet your climate targets at that point. Yeah, well the Environment Department begs to differ and we are on track to uh, reduce by 30 percent by 2030. So, you know, this this is, uh, these are important things. No one doubts that carbon pricing is an important component, whether it be on industrial large emitters or on uh, individual Canadians, uh, is an uh, integral part of uh, our, uh, our, our greenhouse gas reduction plan. But Vashi, what we're doing also is compensating Canadians for making the right choices. But regardless of the choices that you make, eight out of 10 Canadians are better off under wanna, this plan. I want to ask you more about that because when you say no one doubts 
the efficacy of carbon pricing or, or the fact that they are better off. There are a lot of people, in fact, who do doubt that. What about farmers, small business owners, Indigenous leaders in Ontario, some of whom have got together to actually ask the federal court to be exempted from the carbon tax because they say that it leaves their communities worse off than others and breaches the principles of reconciliation. Clearly, there are many people who do not believe that they are better off and they're willing to go to court to fight you on that. Well, I believe the finance department has special measures for small businesses. And none of them have been paid out with for, respect, Minister. There's $2.5 billion for, sitting in your coffers that have not been paid for out. For Indigenous uh, people, and I, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that on Friday uh, passed that, that uh, announcement uh, or announcements about future plans going forward uh, ha was made. But we'll, uh, we'll uh, follow up on that with you. But overall, why would those groups have taken you to court if they felt they were better off. We were elected in 2019 and in 2021, uh, just a little over two years ago, on a platform of having a comprehensive uh, plan to fight greenhouse gases, to reduce greenhouse gases from Canada, and uh, a specific proposal around carbon pricing. You know who else did? The Conservatives. You and I are from this region, Mr. Polyev as well. We saw him uh, walk around his riding, knocking on doors with brochures that said, "We're going to put uh, a price on pollution. We're but going I'm not to have talking just about a, the a car we're going to have a carbon price." But no, but if if we believed them then, how are we to believe them now? But it's it's. I'm pointing to the examples of indigenous uh, people in this country. For example, in Ontario, a group of chiefs have taken your government to court, asking for an exemption from the price on carbon. Small business owners, farmers, mm -hmm. who who asked for a bill that your government then voted against and had the Senate gut. I mean, yes. these are these are not inherently conservatives. NDP leader Rachel Notley in Alberta is no longer convinced of the effectiveness of a consumer carbon tax. Wab Canoe, the NDP premier of Manitoba, also no longer convinced of the same. The U.S., nobody's accusing them of not having a climate plan. They do not believe, the ambassador of the United States has told me explicitly, that a consumer price on uh, a consumer carbon tax is necessary to effectively mitigate the Well, that's the because nothing gets change. through the U.S. Congress. Uh, with in fairness, they not, don't believe that a consumer carbon tax is necessary. Are they all wrong? Well, and you haven't pointed to all the jurisdictions, uh, whether they be in Europe or elsewhere, who have implemented uh, a price on carbon, who who have made that in the heart of their uh, plans to fight greenhouse gases and combat climate change. This is an important no program. This is an important program and it's so for. important, it's so important that the Conservatives also committed to do it in 2021. And I take your point around that, but, but my examples that I provided you were well, how's that not a, Conservatives. How, how is that a minor point that in two years ago, two, it's not a minor the, point, but I'm Pierre hearing Polyev, you the government, not the Conservatives. As I've told you, I've, yeah. told, I've challenged them multiple, on multiple instances about the lack of a climate plan. I'm not taking away from the argument you're putting forward, but that's not an excuse not to answer questions on behalf of your government. Well, he won't come explain it here. Instead, he's in these scrums, you saw him this week, punching down at female journalists. You know, how is that okay? How is it okay for Mr. Polyev to refuse to answer questions about his climate plan, refuse to answer specific questions about these things? Uh, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm saying I'm here to ask your government questions right mm -hmm. now. And I'll conclude this part of our entry by asking whether or not you would consider pausing the increases on the price on carbon as long as inflation stays above the target of 2%. Mm. Well, you know, experts came before the Agriculture Committee, for example, in the last couple of weeks uh, and said there's no provable link between food prices, for example, uh, and the price on carbon. Um, so, you know, these rebates are working. They are going into people's bank accounts on the 16th of the month every three months. This is a very important feature of, uh, of this plan. And uh, those rebates, I will remind you, also go up. And so, you know, this ratio so no. of eight, eight, eight out of ten families will continue to benefit. So no, from, you won't from, consider uh, pausing from it. the price on carbon. So you won't consider pausing it. No. Okay, Minister, I'll leave it there. Appreciate your time. Thank right. you. Thank you.